In our last lesson, we looked at some basic common diatonic sequences in tonal harmony. It's possible to create sequences where the basic pattern being repeated is more than one or two chords. In this example, in F major, the unit being sequenced is four chords long. Note that in all our examples, the inevitable diminished chords that arrive on certain degrees of the scale are treated with the same voice fitting as the major and minor chords. It's as though the repeated pattern takes precedence over some of the local voice leading conventions. For example, note the double leading tones above in the second and third bars. Once a sequence is established, to end it means we must somehow break the pattern, which will automatically make that moment stand out. This is why a piece virtually never ends in the middle of a sequence. It needs some kind of extra punctuation so the listener doesn't feel like the stop is just arbitrary. If we wanted to end the preceding example after this sequence, we would add something like this, at a minimum. Sometimes the composer will vary the sequence to avoid monotony. One way to do this is using invertible counterpoint, the composer exchanges the parts during the repetition, thereby varying the surface. In this example, from Beethoven's Sonata Opus 26, the hands exchange parts in the third bar. The sequence is still very audible, but the surface has changed. Eventually, composers realize that just because, say, a melody is in sequence doesn't mean the harmony will be as well. Here's the beginning of Mozart's Symphony in G minor, K550. I've reduced the harmony from arpeggio figuration to block chords. The melody from measure 1 to the middle of measure 5 is then sequenced to step down in the following bars. But the harmony makes a circular progression. There's no harmonic sequence at all. The opposite is also possible. The sequence can appear only in the harmony. Here's an example from the second movement of Mozart's Piano Sonata in A minor, K310. Here the left hand, the bass line, has a long sequence all the way down from the high C down to the low E. The right hand includes imitation, but only at one spot, where the lower voice comes in the second bar. It is, however, not at the same interval as the continuing bass sequence. The bass has gone down a seventh since the first presentation of this motive, but the imitating lower voice comes in only a third lower. And apart from this, there's nothing even vaguely sequential in the right hand. So, sequences can include many different levels of repetition, from the simplest, most literal, to richer and more complex versions involving changes of texture, melody, and harmony. But to be called the sequence, the immediate response to the listener must be to recognize the similarity, like... Oh yes, I've heard that before, and not, what's that? As so often in music, everything lies in achieving the right degree of contrast. Too little is boring, and too much is incoherent. <laughs>